and welcome. This is Studio Talk. I'm here, Cheryl Duick with... Daryl Duick. And we're here with John DeVries from PEG Canada and Jason Reynolds, who is an audio engineer and a tour production manager. And yeah, we'll just keep going. Um, so, hey, John, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. I've been in the um, pro AV industry uh, probably, uh, I guess, about uh, 30 years now. Uh, as well, a uh, musician artist on the side, uh, playing semi-pro since I was 15. Um, so I have been involved with the both the production side uh, for many years, not only in the front part of the stage, but on, also on the stage. So uh, I do know the, uh, have the ear of the artists on stage and as well working with the sound guys to make our harmonious environment. So that has allowed me to do a lot of different uh, seminar training across Canada with different churches at many different times. And Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yes, sir. I am an a audio engineer. I work both live and in the studio, predominantly live for the last um, six years I've been touring. I'm a production manager, a tour manager, front of house engineer, monitor engineer. I do it all. <laughs> um, and I, I endorse a few cool, cool brands. I endorse Groove Gear, Radio, Engineering, JH Audio, iConnectivity Interfaces, and I'm a member of the DPA Masters Club. And I also consult and do design for churches. Um, should most artists be live streaming today? John, what about, what's your thought on this? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, especially when um, you know it's difficult for, as with today, with to play able to play anywhere. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so you know you can very easily start with a just using your iPhone to Facebook or whatever live stream, uh, and then get very you know, a little bit more sophisticated with you know multiple uh, video cameras or GoPros or Sony cams and some better audio. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great to, and not only that, of course, a lot of people are holding, you know, watch worship parties as well uh, online, which is kind of fun as well. And Jason, what's your thought on the live stream? Should most of the artists be live streaming? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's always um, value to engaging on um, an online audience. I mean, the music industry has changed quite a bit in, in the last 10 years, um, you know, so streaming streaming numbers now matter a lot right like even with record labels record labels are looking at your streaming numbers touring companies live nation and the such are looking at your streaming numbers so i mean even prior to covid it's it's it definitely plays into um your overall marketing strategy um but as as john mentioned even during this time of covid where you can't connect with audiences in person, it has become even that much more important. So I think definitely it is something that 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 artists and churches should be definitely considering doing at this time for sure. Okay, so last week we had a, a conversation a little bit about live streaming and, and one of our panelists actually quoted this. He said, there are some people that are live streaming and they shouldn't because it seems to make or it can break their their the momentum that they've created, I guess, by performing live. By your responses, it seems like you do not agree with that. But thinking about that, do you agree with that? Have you seen something like that where you would have thought maybe they shouldn't be live streaming? Well, you know, again, it goes back to, um, uh, you know, when you're streaming with just a uh, an iPhone or iPad, uh, the mic quality is, you know, medium quality. The camera quality is better, of course. Uh, but then there, you know, you, you think about it this way as the, uh, 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 even in a live situation, a bad mix could kill you. But in the streaming situation, a bad mix can also kill you. Uh, and there's factors for that, you know, with microphones and, and, what the, and what the internet stream does to audio as well. You have to make sure you're listening on the other end and readjusting if you're using a little mixer and such as well, because the stream will alter the mix. Uh, and especially as well, you know, if you're using a, a little mixer and you got to think about your, your audio video sync and add some delay so that they sync up together when you get into a multi-camera situation. Uh, and I'll chat a little bit about that later when I, you know, talk about, give a good example of a church that I helped out recently who just wanted to start the first time in streaming. 
Jason, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, I mean, if you're not going to put the effort into the quality, then you probably shouldn't do it. But I, I agree with John where that's my take for artists who are performing live. I mean, if you're not going to put effort into the quality live, you shouldn't do it either. So, you know what I mean? Like, and, and that's as a tour manager and a production manager, that's con conversations that I often have is, is what kind of effort and energy are you putting into your live show? And is it a reflection? Because again, we're just, that's the nature of the business now. Like, I mean, pretty much every artist has to tour now because publishing is not like it was in the 80s and 90s, right? Like, we, nobody listens to the radio hardly i mean uh, and and really and truly you have a you have a lot of artists right now who are getting big on 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 spotify and and apple music and the like and those streaming platforms don't really pay a lot of royalties so it's not like in the past where where you could just release a hit record and then just kind of chill at home forever right like it's it, live shows are gonna it, it, it the, the only difference between a live show in a concert hall and a live show um, streaming is how people are consuming it, the medium. So they're not standing in the room, but it's still a live show. So the, the question is, how much effort are you going to put? And to touch on John's point is doing the research into what platforms to stream on, right? Like, for example, I teach audio masterclasses from home. I go straight to YouTube because I can put stereo uncompressed audio into YouTube. Right. I don't go to Facebook, let's say, because music quality to Facebook, Facebook is going to squash it a little bit. Right. So that was some extensive research, even for me, who is not really a I've had to learn to be a video guy kind of overnight because I can't <laughs> I can't call any of my video friends, tell them to come over to my house because we're supposed to be social distancing. So I've learned how to <laughs> I've kind of learned how to do all of that. But yeah, definitely doing the research to know, OK, the certain sites to go to so that the music can be represented that way on the, on the consumer. And, um, which is, it's kind of the same approach as a front of house guy. When I walk into a room, I want to listen to the PA and know what it sounds like in the room. So as John said, same thing, you got to know what it's sounding like coming across to the, to the audience for sure. Let's go deep, deeper into the quality of the stream. What, in your opinion, um, identifies a high quality or better quality live stream? Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, there's there's really three elements to it. Um, is is just and it's funny because it's so similar to live shows, right? Just but but certain elements are way more important, which is like video, lighting, and audio is the three pillars of 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 what's gonna determine um, a good stream, right? So. So high quality video is important. Um, your lighting has to be proper so that you look like a human being on, on camera. And then <laughs> obviously, obviously your audio capture has to be, has to be depending on the quality and how much you want to invest into audio capture, good microphones, that kind of stuff. But then, and then finally, I think a kind of as an added piece to that is your internet. Um, your internet speed like the worst thing is when you're watching a stream and it's buffering like every two minutes <laughs> like I, I jump off like I can't stay on a stream that's so like one of the things I had to do is I had to call Bell and get a second line brought into my house when I started to stream from home and hardwire my internet to make sure that my download and upload speed would give me the ability to have continuous um audio and video upload. So those are kind of the four main things. Um, and again, it, it's, it sounds like repetitive, but that's exactly what, imagine if you went to a show and every minute the artist froze on stage and was like, hold on one second. <laughs> And then they just picked up back play it again. <laughs> yeah, but come on, there's a lot of artists on stage who actually do that. That just freeze. Yeah, but yeah, not well, every not two minutes. Freeze, but they're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty quiet. They're pretty low energy. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. For, I, I guess from the standpoint of a consumer, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> like I like something that's continuous and works. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Jason. Bandwidth, bandwidth uh, is a key. Um, and I'll use a good example of a church I'm helping out here locally who first wanted to do stream for the first time. And they had a bad, not a bad front of house system. Um, but right away I discovered with them is I was checking their upload, even though they were paying for 20 megabit up, 
they were sometimes only getting two or three. And I'm so right away I'm calling Rogers. And I also noticed too as well when you're setting this up, uh, they were going through two switch hops, uh, which doesn't help either. Uh, and then I, I changed their camera from 1080p to 720p. So typically you want to have, you know, three or four megabits safe up low that you can upload to your your uh, webcasting server, or even if you're just going to, um, you know, Facebook or whatever, you, you've got to have that. And the other thing too is that even if you're using just a guitar, vocal, and drums, uh, you're gonna you need to in- input some delay so that you're gonna have because especially if you're dealing with a bandwidth problem that guitar will be out by a couple milliseconds uh, that you need to insert. So, you know, in a larger church, they'll have consoles where you can insert delay on the aux, aux stream, which is your audio mix to the stream. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, jump into that later is when we talk about encoders and which way to go as well, you know, later on. So, mm-hmm. but it all affects the quality of that, you know, uh, but if you're starting off with good microphones and preamps, that, that helps a lot. And you don't have to, you know, if you're just a singer, uh, songwriter, guitar player, a, you know, a two or three channel uh, preamp, uh, USB preamp, your computer is fine. It'll do, it'll do nice, you know. Actually, to go with what Jason was saying, I actually thought of um, one other thing, and that is, where's the energy? into the performance aspect of it because you can have all that other stuff good but if they don't have the energy or have worked on themselves before they walked in you don't have a show whether it's live or like in live in the venue or live on stream i've always that's one of the things that always annoys me is i go through all these streams watching stuff and it's just like there's no energy there it sucks life out of everything what would you do in a situation like this where we're locked in covid you can't go out there's no audience what can you tell them is there anything technically that they can do to help bring energy to their to their events so that they're doing live well the uh one thing you may want to consider is make sure that um uh you you, you're in the right like for instance you're you have the right environment surrounding that makes you feel good as well so if it's your church and if you have a big platform then your camera angle should be very tight but then change the platform and feel and light so that you feel a little more comfortable. And as well, have a monitor in front of you so you can see what you really look like. And, and, and also I had to tell them as well in these situations, okay, remember there's your audience is that camera, period. So <laughs> don't look, you know, you can look around, but there, you know, and even when the church is in full bloom again, uh you know then the camera is gone per se because you're reacting to the congregation of course but the camera is still capturing everything as well um so i think it's all you know for me even and if you're at your home in your own studio environment it's about creating a, that's that right space as well you know that and if you're singing with tracks you know high energy tracks and so on to, to you know to get you going per se so yeah i think practice 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 right like um you know, like I, I tell, I produce our church's broadcast. Um, so I actually don't do a lot of audio. I have a friend of mine who, who is also a touring guy who his church doesn't have um, their own building. And so he's found himself with lots of free time on Sundays. So he's been helping me out um, and mixing our broadcast to free me up to produce. Um, but yeah, I tell our, I tell our worship leaders, we pre-record all our praise and worship. So we record for like the entire month. The only live elements is our host and, and our pastor speaking. Um, but yeah, I tell them practice in front of the mirror, like, you know, like get a hairbrush and go in front of the mirror and like practice, be intentional about what you're going to say and, and, and how you're going to, how you come off, you know what I mean? Um, practice is everything I, I think one of the things i learned from the artists that i tour with is um no matter if it's 10 people in the venue or 10,000 they're going to give you the same performance right so um but that comes with time that comes with experience and i know it's easy when you're starting out funny enough because i hear a lot of people say man i couldn't get up in front of 10,000 people it's actually easier when you have 10,000 screaming people in front of you than when you only have five who are not really that interested. <laughs> so so imagine when you have like an empty room and it's just you and a camera and some people working behind the scenes. It can be intimidating, but yeah, just practice till it becomes natural, you know what I mean? Now, because we were talking about churches, 
Um, how much production do you put on on the mix? Do you spend a lot of time remixing in post? Do you auto tune everything? Or if you're live streaming with the bands, do you drop auto tune on that? I've seen churches where they're doing all that. I'm just curious, where's your thought on that? Should they, should they not? I mean, it's really, it really depends on my, my, I say to everybody all the time is begin with the end in mind. So, um, whatever the, the, the output needs to be is, is what should determine your input. Right. So, so you don't bake a cake starting with ingredients. You, you start with the type of cake you want, then that determines the ingredients that you put in. Right. So if, if you want chocolate cake, you need certain ingredients. <laughs> right? Um, right. So, so I think it really depends on what you want to accomplish. Like our church is a little bit more traditional. Like, I mean, we have, high, we have high energy worship, but um, we're traditional, like urban gospel. We're not really contemporary. So we don't really auto tune. We don't use that live. We don't necessarily use that in post. And, and we also don't necessarily have a need to, I mean, if it's done, anything that's done tastefully for me is, is allowed, so to speak, because everything is a tool, right? So it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish with that tool and how you can implement it tastefully into what you're doing. If, if you don't know how to use autotune and your vocal end up sound, ends up sounding like T-Pain, then it probably shouldn't be using it in church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it might be a little bit distracting unless that's what you're going for. Right. Unless that. So so I think it, it really all depends. Like for us, when we pre-record, I do bring it back into my studio and mix the multi tracks. Like I don't only I don't just take a stereo mix down. And so I am touching it up. I'm making it as good as possible. Um, but we also live stream on regular Sundays prior to covid when we're having um, regular service. We're live streaming that. So our goal is always to make it as best as possible. Um, our pastor is a musician. So um he was a musician first before becoming a pastor and and so we're a very musical church um and and so music plays a big part in in what we do and and so we always try to make that as best as possible using whatever tools that are are necessary to to make that happen so it's a little bit unfair question because my church has like a digital console and a massive <laughs> pa and we see 2300 people and we have a seven piece band so you know what i mean like it's like we're producing everything anyway even a regular service is is like highly rehearsed and produced so i mean um but but i think it's the heart behind it right like it ultimately um it's the heart that matters um that's that's something i learned from my friend ricky cook from hillsong um that heart is everything so even when you stand behind a console in a church environment it doesn't really matter how great you are as an audio guy or how great of a singer you are if the heart is not there if you if you don't have a good heart if the reason why you're doing it is is not to affect lives and change lives through what you're doing it's not ministry oriented then it really doesn't matter the tools don't matter the how good it is doesn't matter because then it really just becomes a show so when we get into now that that gospel music or church environment then the heart the heart is everything and your congregation knows if your heart's in the right place they can appreciate a a the effort of what you're trying to do. So not every church is going to be Elevation Church or Hillsong or, or Lakewood, right? But, but and, and I always warn people not to compete to be that because God hasn't called your church to be Lakewood or Elevation or Hillsong. They've called you to be you and, and to be the best you that you can be to your congregation and your community. So that is ultimately what happened, what, what matters, you know? So yeah, there's some some kind of minimum requirements for quality and gear but even beyond that make sure that this is good and if that's good man you're gonna do great things regardless even if you're just streaming with an iphone you know even if you're just using the camera on the iphone because that's all you have if your heart's in the right place god can use it and he can bless it um before we go on i just want to remind viewers that are just tuning in right now we are talking about live streaming with john devries <clears throat> of peg canada and jason reynolds who's a pro audio uh, engineer and production manager in a variety of both of them in a variety of environments so 
Um, that was very rich, um, Jason, and, and so true, so true. It is about the heart. We can have the best equipment or not the best equipment, but as long as the heart's there, that's the core, that's what matters. This brings up a question, actually, uh, from our audience, which is, what is your advice for startup art uh, artists with next to no equipment? What do you suggest to them regarding live streaming? Um, I mean, yeah, you can very easily, of course, use your phone or iPad and get, uh, you know, live stream, face stream uh, very, very easily. Uh, but so it all depends too as well. If I think about, I'm going to go back and forth between churches and artists. If, if you're a church, not everybody's on Facebook. So you have to make sure you're streamed to your site, your website, um, which is now going to require an encoder being a software or hardware encoder. So the encoder takes the the camera and the audio feed and encodes, encodes it to an H.264 uh, format so that it can stream on all the different platforms. A lot of people want to be able to stream to their church site, uh, like a regular church per se, uh, and then they also want to be able to simulcast to Facebook live stream and so on. So you have to have the, the host company that will allow you to do that. Um, and of course, the encoder to take those signals properly as well. Now, that's that's a if I, the reason I mentioned, the, I mentioned a hardware encoder is because hardware encoders typically only cost about $250 uh, as an example. So that's going to give you something that you can punch in a, an HDMI camera, uh, an audio feed, uh, you know, from a little mixer or something like this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Ethernet out to your internet uh, connection to wherever platform you're going or to your host company. So the reason why I mentioned host company too, because host companies do a lot more than just handle the stream. They're handling all your traffic through different servers around the world. They're also giving you uh, pop-up pages so that, you know, come see the stream on, you know, starting at nine o'clock on Sunday type of thing. Uh, then of course, also, uh, you know, hosting all your recordings in the cloud as well. Uh, so, so really more of a, advantage it if you want to do go that far a little farther uh, but I'm just going to share my screen with you as well to show you a couple ideas where you can start so hold bear with me here for a second share my screen okay so does everyone see this yes, yes. absolutely okay so I I'm happy to be the, the rep for Roland Pro IV so I do know the products very well and they're very big in the in the streaming industry. Um, so even simple things like this, the VR1 HD actually has a couple of microphone inputs, but it also has three HDMI inputs, but it also has as well, a very simple on-air button. So it has that kind of plug and play broadcast studio feel. Uh, but it also, well, the big thing about this, in the back, a lot of the streaming consoles, and let me see if I have a back shot here. Um, so there's, there is the front and there we can decide. Here we go. So this is the big thing here. So this has a USB stream out. And what does that mean? That's USB 3.0 is carrying both audio and video into my computer. Now I've, I've so I've, I've mixed, I'm now taking that mixed audio and video stream with delay uh, into my computer and then into what format platform I want to go to uh, and I'm streaming. Uh, at the same time, I can also record to a USB memory key uh, as well. But there are also software platforms that allow you to do that as well. I mean, even with Zoom, I can use this, use this with Zoom. Zoom's going to record, of course, as well. But the big thing about this is um, it allows you to uh, very simply create a uh, very effective studio for you know under two thousand dollars, as an example. And uh, part of it too is that. It also allows you to uh, run automated. So basically, as you're switching microphones, say if you have another person with you or switching video, it's going to follow everything as well. Uh, that's one example. So then if I go into, as an example, to the next step up, you have a product called the VR4. So the VR4 now incorporates uh, broadcast style buttons, um, touchscreen interface, more audio inputs, more video inputs, and it keeps going up from there as well. But in, in starting easy, easy per se, in regards to how do I start very cheaply? Well, the key thing is not only do I need 
if I think about a church or an ours, uh, not only do I need the encoder, but I also need, as an example, a good camera. Uh, so if I if I were just some people say, why can't I just get a simple HDMI, uh, you know, uh, portable handy cam? Well, the problem with that, the iris is very small. So you either have to be very close up, and if it's going into a church environment, it'll never work at the back of the church. So you need to invest, uh, you know, as an example, in a larger format camera, such as a, you know, something from data video or Marshall Electronics or um, PCC Optics, and they start around eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars as an example. But this is all part of a, you know, when a church is looking at this, or even an artist, uh, kind of more of a two to five year plan. How how far do I go? Do I start with one camera, then one day have three? You know, and a good example of this church I'm helping here. They, they didn't have anything at all. How do we start? And maybe one day, you know, we have three cameras and maybe one day there's a camera by the uh, baptistry. So uh, water baptism, this is, and then of course, I'm now I'm streaming this as well. So this opened up a lot of good conversations as well. Um, so there's, there's a couple ideas, but the key thing is as well is, is finding yourself with a, connected with a good uh, stream hosting company. So there's many out there. Uh, in Toronto, there's a company called Video Link, L-I-N-Q. Uh, also, a lot of churches use Streamhoster. Streamhoster is a very cool company across the world. Uh, the church I'm helping here started with Streamhoster as well. Their technical support was 100% A+. Plus, and that's a key thing. You know, who can I talk to? I don't know how to, how to set, how do we set this up type of thing. Um, and then at the same time, if again, if you're streaming to your website, you need you need to work with your web guy so he understands how to put in a uh, player that you know when they go there Sunday press play and now I'm I'm, sh I'm sharing the stream as well so and Jason what about you yeah. do, you have, do you have special tools on the audio side um so there's a couple of things that you can do um I, I'll I'll do both sides so I mean John basically covered a lot of that um that that bigger video stuff i actually have a vr4 a roland vr4 hd in my studio that's what i'm coming through right now um so yeah great it, it's got um eight channels of audio that you can put into it like it's dope um but i i i do some more complicated things on the audio side i'm only using it for the video side but um just even for individuals like if you wanted to um if you wanted to let's say stream with your phone um, there's a few things that you can do. Um, actually, Roland um, makes a little unit called the Go Mixer, which is like 150 bucks. Um, it's a four four input little mixer that comes with a phone uh, phone cable, so it will connect to your phone to an iPhone or an Android phone, and your phone actually sees it as the audio input. So you can, like, if you're playing guitar and singing, you can put your guitar into one input. You could put your vocal mic into one input and actually have a mixed direct sound into your phone. Um, and then you can go to, you know, you could go to whatever your streaming platform of choice is, Instagram, anything, because it's on your phone. Um, so that's like a good, easy way to get good audio input. Um, and it, it takes a TRS or quarter inch jack. So you, you, you could use any vocal microphone. You could use your SM58, um, which everybody has like an SM58. I think I have one somewhere in here. Um, and, and you could just like any vocal mic that you have and you could plug your guitar in, you can plug your keyboard in. It has a stereo input, um, for stereo instruments. It even takes a one eighth cable for an iPod input. So like if you want to sing on top of a track, you can do that. Like it's really, really handy. Um, I own one, uh, Roland Go Mix. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why I bought it, but I have one. <laughs> um, but because I saw it and a friend of mine was using it to record, like to do like drums covers at home. And I'm like, that's dope. I should buy one. Um, so you, you can do that. That's an easy way. Um, if you want to spend a little bit more, like if you're podcasting, like right now I'm talking through a DPA 6066 microphone, which you can't, it, you can hardly see it. If I, I got to pull it out for you oh, to see it. Yep. That's how tiny it is. Um, DPA makes a, let me see if I can find it. Um, Cause this will be interesting for folks to see. DPA makes a interface for your phone called the MMA interface. So if, if, if you're in a little bit better financial position and you can spend a little bit more, this is the DPA MMA. And what that is, is DPA microphones have um, uh, 
that they use a technology called micro dot. So their microphones screw in there. You can put two microphones in there and then it has a cable that connects to your phone. So DPA microphones are actually used on movie sets worldwide. Like they're phenomenal, phenomenal microphones. Um, you can get lap, uh, lav mics, you can get headsets, you can get instrument mics. So this is a two channel um, micro dot. So if you had, let's say a 4099 for your, um, acoustic guitar you can mic it up with a dpa and then have your microphone your vocal mic go into the other channel so if i mean this this kit that comes with two lav mics um and you can put a lav mic on your guitar no problem it's going to sound phenomenal that kit costs about maybe about 1600 canadian um but but the quality is i mean you could cut a record with this like right to your phone um so so there's 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 options to do that. There's also an app that you can use if you're using a computer to go out to your stream. Um, just further to John's point about cameras, um, if you have an iPhone, I can't speak for Android users. There's actually an app called EpoCam, um, where it streams the camera of your iPhone to your computer as a as a video input. So like, let me I I just to show people what it looks like, because again, if you don't have like a this is my iPhone cam and I can actually go into zoom and change my video input into zoom to Epo cam. And that's my iPhone. Okay. Right. So obviously if you have a new iPhone, like a, like an iPhone X or something like that, the camera on it is phenomenal. So you can actually use that camera and, and still do a little bit pro of production. If you're using like a software like OBS or Wirecast or something like that, OBS and Wirecast will actually see EpoCam as an input. Um, so, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff that you, you can get creative. You don't have to necessarily run out and spend $5,000 right away, but you should really consider making a bit of an investment into what you're doing. So definitely having some sort of decent audio interface, even if you're starting off with your phone, like the audio interface is going to be important. Don't just settle for the microphone on the phone or the microphone on your computer. It's just never going to give you, first of all, it's going to sound really ambient because those microphones are built to pick up a lot of stuff. Um, it's that you're not going to get very direct sound. So yeah, definitely starting um, with something that can, that can give you some sort of better sound quality is, is where you want to start for sure. But you can start as low as a hundred, $150. Um, IK Multimedia is another great one. Like they, they make um, these little in interfaces for your phone. Um, the iRig, it, it's a very popular one. And IK Multimedia has become very popular in the last few years. So that's another one. Apogee makes a, a single input one, the Apogee Jam. So there's a, there's a bunch of um, options out there for, for podcasting, for, for, for getting really good audio in, into it. So, but my favorites definitely for, for like that, um, phone audio interface, my favorites, the roll and go mixer only because, and I'm not just saying that cause John is here. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's four inputs and like, it's, it's yeah. dope, man. It's very easy to use. Is there a tip jar? Or? Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> send your, send your collection, uh, your offering over here. <laughs> hey, sorry. I'm going to add one more piece to that because the Roland actually has a product called the live cast, which is new, um, Cool. designed for working with, um, well, as you can see, uh, basically for smartphone systems, and very it basically you're you're using two type of you're using an iPad and an iPhone, but you're actually your iPhone or iPad becomes your monitor as well, and you plug a little microphone as you can put a balance line input there as you can see, uh, and very simple, yeah, USB out to your computer or whatever where you go. Super cool. Pretty now cool most of these. Now, most of these you said is more for for the iPhone. If someone has an Android phone, do any of these uh, any of these equipments um, um, like it work for the Android as well, or is it mostly if you if people want a live cast, they better invest into kind of the iPhone i products. No, they work for Android as well. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is EpoCam. I that's that's just an app that I have on my iPhone that allows me to do that. But I, I'm I'm sure they have an Android app. But most of the interfaces are either or, and they come with both cables. Like you you can use um, the 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 DPA MMA interface also comes with a USB regular USB cable as well. So you can actually use that with a computer as well um, for your for your mic interface. So um, 
yeah, it, it's not only for your phone. So um, what are three tips for software? If guys are just going to record it and edit it so that they can just upload it to the, to the web for social media that they can put out there. What are three tips for software on their, on their DAWs for them to do? So for both video and audio? Sure. Yep. So um, I'm glad you brought that up because um, as an example, if a, you know, a, a church or individual artist wants to capture uh, video and audio into a platform, they have to use a capture device as well um, or interface. Uh, so, you know, typically you may want to look at, uh, and I'll just share one. I had it prepared here as well. So I'm just going to share it quickly so people get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, this is a product called, uh, let's see if I can get it here. Something my way here, one sec. Right here, well, sorry. Anyway, it's called the Majwell HDMI USB capture device. So basically it's HDMI in, uh, embedded in HDMI. Um, and then it's also taking, so it's taking audio and video into your computer over USB 3.0. Uh, so the, the advantage of that is I'm capturing. Then I can go to programs like um, vMix. So vMix is actually a free software platform to a certain level. And then when it goes up into a higher platform, higher resolutions, then you have to pay $60 a month. But that'll allow you to produce a whole video with, uh, with captions and, and green screen type of effects. Uh, and then at the same time, once that's recorded, I can push it to a stream as well, um, being whatever that may be as well. Uh, so, and then of course there's, you know, programs like, uh, as Jason mentioned, Wirecast, which helps you encode and record at the same time as well. Uh, so there's many different ways to look at it as well. And, you know, and there's also, you know, there's, there's, there's small video mixer systems out there that, um, you know, could be under the $500 mark that allow you to switch video, but it also allows you to take a USB out to a, a solid state drive for recording both the audio and video as well. Uh, and some of those you have to be careful because they're very plasticky. They're not made for the long term. Uh, but if you want to start out that way, you can as well. So, so as an example, this church I'm helping here in town, same thing. Now, okay, we just wanted to stream, but now they want to record. We want to record Wednesday night. And again, now we got to incorporate, take that MPEG 4 video. Now they're going to throw into DaVinci Resolve or VMix and create a, you know, a content they want to push to a stream with a bumper and a start and announcements and this and so on and so on. So. Yeah, I think from an audio standpoint, um, if you're going to like multi-track and mix, um, my, my suggestion would probably be to go with a program like Reaper. Um, Reaper as a DAW is not very expensive. I think it's like 60 something dollars. Um, but it comes with a whole ton of, um, standard plugins that, that are really good, like good EQs, um, good, good stuff to tone shape. Whereas if you went with something like Pro Tools or Logic, you don't get a lot of standard, um, plugins to be able to, to, to do stuff in post. Um, so if you are going to, like, if you, obviously I do this for a living. So I, I use pro tools and have like a million plugins, UAD and waves and stuff. But if you, if you just look in this for something where you got like a decent EQ, uh, maybe a compressor, if you know how to use a compressor, um, then Reaper is a great option. Um, low, low cost and very easy to use. And nowadays, as with everything, there are a million tutorials on YouTube to teach you how to use it. Like, I mean, you can, use, I taught myself final cut from YouTube university. Um, I just went on and, and watched tutorials on how to use final cut. And now I'm like editing all my church's videos. It's insane. I'm an audio guy. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, just, um, this has been, this is really great. Um, you are, you guys are generating some questions here, but I just want to remind everybody who is just tuning in. We are talking about live streaming and what it takes to make a good live stream. We're here with Jason Reynolds from, uh, well, he's an audio engineer, pro audio engineer, 
and production manager. He does that for a living, as well as John DeVries, who uh, is from PEG Canada and is full of information and lots of advice on how um, you, can, you can actually become a pro live streamer if you want to. Now, there are some questions from our audience and I'm, I'm hoping I can reiterate them really, really well here. Um, so one question was, so would you use, a, it looks like a one eighth to a one eighth to play the music from a second phone into a Go mixer? Yes, you can. Yes, you can do that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be stereo anyway, so. Okay. And if you were performing live as a solo artist, but wireless, moving around and such with your music playing from your computer, is there a more affordable way to get quality vocal audio than the DPA Mike mentioned? Um, I mean, there's always more affordable ways. <laughs> um, but it, so if you hear the, the issues that you face with wireless, um, is that to get to get really good wireless sound you kind of unfortunately the the quality is directly proportionate to price so if you find like for example you know they have these my pro wireless units that a lot of people have that cost maybe four or five hundred dollars they're not good at all they don't they don't sound good and the wireless connectivity becomes an option uh, an issue sorry so the, the biggest problem with wireless is if you don't have a system that handles wireless connectivity um, very well, then the quality, it, the, the radio transmission and the quality is going to severely be hampered um, because it's getting interference or whatever, a dropping signal, that kind of stuff, right? So I, I personally would recommend against wireless if, if you're in a situation where you're live streaming at home and you're working on like an individual budget, I would recommend against it. Um, I would I would sooner see you go out and spend on a hundred foot XLR cable and you can run around your entire house because it's a hundred feet. Um, to be very honest, like it, it to to get a decent wireless microphone, you're looking at spending about fifteen hundred dollars to. And that would be like a, a Sennheiser Evolution 100 series would sort of be the lowest, especially if you live in Toronto and you're in a in a densely populated area. Um, it, you're going to have issues if you don't get a, a, a fairly decent quality microphone. So so and then you need an audio interface. You still need a way to get that into your streaming device of choice. So I, I would say um, if you are going to invest a thousand dollars, invest in a in a better quality audio interface and and use a wired microphone, um, than to spend on a wire a wireless microphone and not have an interface that's going to even capture what you need it to capture from an audio quality standpoint. So, um, wireless is, I mean, listen, even us touring guys don't really like wireless. We only use it because we have to. Like I, if I if I had a choice. I'd throw away everything that's wireless, to be honest. They keep changing frequencies every two, three years anyway, and I have to buy new stuff. So I, I, I would, I would say, and and especially then you get into stuff like, well, now I've bought this wireless mic, and how do I coordinate frequencies? How do I make sure that the frequency I'm on won't get interfering? You're opening up a whole can of worms that that you could just easily not have to deal with, to be very honest. And, and to go with what you said there, Jason, uh, an SM58 is $150. So you're spending $1,350 to make it go wireless when you can take that $1,350 and buy some foot, almost the, the package of microphones you were talking about. Yeah. And I mean, listen, some of the best records you've ever heard were recorded with this $150 microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you it's fine. <laughs> I get I get the wanting wireless. I do get it. Um if you if you move around a lot, I do. But yeah, you the for $150 are getting um pretty much bulletproof quality um on a SM58 versus having to now spend upwards of fifteen hundred dollars. It's kind of the cost benefit is not is, is not that great. You know what I mean? And and like I said, the last thing you want is dropouts while you're streaming. You don't want to be like an old Bruce Lee movie where you're talking and then <laughs> and then it comes back because your wireless is dropping signal, right? So in the broadcast world, um, it, it's we tend to not go wireless. Like in my home studio where I'm teaching from home and stuff, I am not using anything wireless in the studio except my mouse for my computer. 
I'm just looking as I, as this has been so rich and we're just taking it all in right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking to see if there are any more questions that are popping through, but I think everyone's busy writing all this information down. I will ask this though, you're, you're sharing so much information about these equipment. Is it okay from you guys if we get that list from you so I can put it on our website? Because I think a lot of people will find this of value. Sure. Um, um even after after this broadcast is done and just as a reminder um we will be uh broadcasting this again on youtube um as well so people will be able to be, to see this video again and grab this information hit the pause button take notes it'll be great so um do have another question actually um, about the PreSonus audio box. Have you familiar with that? And if so, what are your thoughts related to this product? I, I'm not familiar. I'm actually Googling it right now. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it as soon as I look at it. Oh, I know, yeah, I know what it is. I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, while you're looking at that, another question has popped up about performing live with a remote musician. Uh, example, a guitarist or a singer. What is your thought on, I guess, live streaming? I guess, I don't know, I guess this person's referring to um, the live streams where we're seeing the multiple squares and, you know, right. the guitarist is here, the drummer's here, and the singer's over here. Like, so what, what, um, what are they using to make that happen? Is that, I'm assuming it's not Zoom, <laughs> right? Right. Um, but what are they using to, to kind of create that? So a lot of that stuff, I, had, I actually told the drummer from my church, he asked me this question today. A lot of that stuff is actually not live. No. Um, so they give you the illusion that it's live. Um, when you're dealing with the internet, every, everything has lag. So it, it is very difficult to um, have remote stuff be perfectly on like that because there is some amount of lag, right? Um, However, there are ways to do it. Like there's ways to bring people in live. Like, again, you'd have to spend a little bit of money. I use Wirecast Studio at home. Wirecast Studio comes with a, um, and we use Wirecast Pro at church. I just don't need the pro features at home. So I use Studio. But Wirecast comes, um, built into it is a, is a thing called Rendezvous, um, where you can start a rendezvous session and send a link to, to someone. And as long as they join, um, through like Google Chrome or, or one of their supported web, um, web applications um, that you can bring them right into Wirecast and do side-by-side -side cameras and stuff like that. It's a little bit less lag than using something like Zoom that has to bounce through multiple servers and stuff, but it's still not perfect. It's still, it's still like I do, I do a program on YouTube called Learn From The Pros every Wednesday to Friday at 2 p.m. Um, and that's how I bring my guests in. I don't go through a Zoom platform. It's it's also way more secure. Um, if you guys have heard the term Zoom bombing, you would understand why you want to use a more secure. I, I've actually experienced the Zoom bombing. I was on a Mix You podcast, uh, um, a Mix You hangout thing, and I was in the middle of speaking. There was just like lots of profanity, and I'm like, where is that coming from? That's not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so using something more secure like that, and I, again, Wirecast Studio is about 600 US, um, so it works out to about 840 Canadian. Um, if you if you um, if you feel like the investment is worth it, like I, I'm teaching from home, so that that's why I made the investment into Wirecast. It just allows me to do a whole um, bunch of other stuff. But um, yeah, that's 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 kind of. Um, my take on that in, in terms of the personas, um, audio box, I will, I haven't used it personally, but I have had, um, good experiences with personas products. Um, I've never had a bad experience with one. I mean, there's definitely better quality stuff, but from what I was just seeing, it's like $150 as an interface. So, um, definitely not, uh, not, I, I wouldn't say it's a horrible choice. Um, I mean, they, they so what you have to understand, and I'm, I'm going to try to make this explanation as not techy as possible, is um, when you sing into a microphone, it's an electrical current, right? To get that into your computer, it has to convert that electrical current to ones and zeros, which are called bits, right? Um, the quality of the analog to digital converters it's what is what affects the sound that you're hearing on the computer end. So an interface like a universal audio Apollo, which I have in my recording studio, 
that's four thousand dollars has better analog to digital converters than an interface that that costs one hundred and fifty dollars. So essentially, what is happening is that the conversion um, of that of that audio signal is just it just has better quality. So the the more you spend um, normally is the better conversion quality you're gonna get. So that's that should kind of govern how much you invest, and and it really depends on how 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 you want to like what this streaming thing means to what you're doing like does it warrant the investment or not right like if you're gonna monetize it then you want to like don't monetize something that people that that you wouldn't pay for like you know what i'm saying like watch your own stuff record your own stuff and and then make sure that like when i teach master classes i go back and watch even though they're live master classes i go back and watch it and make sure and we're constantly making improvements constantly buying more gear to make sure that the quality of what we're sending out to the paying customer is is worth their money right so it, it really all depends if you're kind of just doing something to to stay busy, then sure, buy a hundred and fifty dollar interface. But if you're, but there's also other options too. There's USB, like Rode, um, makes some great USB podcast microphones that go straight into your USB input on your computer. Um, I think they have one called the Podcaster or something like that. That a friend of mine has it, and every time I do a Zoom meeting with him, I'm like, man, your audio is smooth. <laughs> it, it's vocal sounds really good. But um, so yeah, there's 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 definitely ways but nothing to to answer that question nothing is say wrong with like the personas unit but as you look at audio interfaces that's to understand why one may cost five thousand dollars or like my friend who just bought burl all burl a to d converters for his studio twenty thousand dollars worth of converters because he's doing high level recording like he's recording big albums right so it really all depends on again kind of governing yourself by that term, that saying begin with the end in mind it really all depends what you're trying to do and how far you're trying to go with it right and another question that came in and it's more for john what is a recommended camera and interface to get away from what's built into your cell phones your iphones your tablets and your your laptops what's the next step well it, to be honest um you, you have to go to a higher level with a bigger sensor camera so and and it, you know um there's you have you got to look at something that's going to be well if you look at the big church environment or small church environment uh ptz camera that allow you to and or even box cameras uh that are that'll help you with that but they're typically going to start in the 1500 dollars plus area to get anything decent with a big sensor uh, so you can, you, all, you know, you want to bring as much light in as possible, which requires a bigger sensor. Um, and it's worth it in the, in the long term. Um, and with, of course, with the PTZ being whatever manufacturer, they all have software platforms so you can control them over software versus a PTC joystick, which costs more as well. Uh, so, yeah, camera quality is super important. And uh, you, you want to start at 720p for a nice stream uh in, in in nice colors and everything else as well so you know cameras some data video ptc optics uh marshall are all good um and the it gets expensive when you get into higher end panasonic and sony some of the sony 4k cameras ptc are typically close to 10k as an example so you know and the other thing too is that you have to think about distance so you know if you're depending on how big space you're in you want something with big zoom as well. Uh, and if it's a medium sized church with say 300 seats, you want something with a 30 zoom camera, for example. So. I can actually tag on to that a little bit too, even though I'm an audio guy. Um, I'll show you this thing here that I use. Let me switch to my Epochem and I'll show you this guy here because John mentioned Marshall. Yeah, that's a, that's a CV 503, which is a broadcast well, that's what I was using before. It shoots in 1080p, 60 frames a second or 30. Good, you can set camera. it. Yeah, it's a it's a POV camera. It's tiny. Um, it's about $800, I think, from um, AV Shop, and it goes down to SDI. So you can use it with a with a um, video mixer or you know whatever. So it's it's actually a really nice camera. It's 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 high def. It's pretty good. 
Yeah, and Marshall makes good good products. Yeah, they're definitely very good, Marshall. And of course, after you buy the camera, you still have to get the converter box to get it into your laptop. Right. Which is again we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I definitely those those rolling um, ones that John was showing. I'm a I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. Um, they they take HDMI. The 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 more expensive one, the bigger ones will take SDI. But you can get a you can get like a Blackmagic micro converter for 50, 50, 60 bucks that will convert SDI to HDMI and go into. That's what I use at home. Um, and yeah, you can't go wrong. Like you can't it. And and the cool thing the cool thing about putting your audio in through. Um, the the like the Roland VR4 and then going USB out is that it's coming to the computer synced right like the audio is going to match that video um, so it's going to do a lot of that work for you um, so as long as you're encoding at a at a really good upload speed on your internet like it te it should arrive at your streaming platform sort of synced so yeah it it's yeah they're great products great great products the, the other thing too with um you know a vr type switcher with multiple input channels and multiple cameras if you have a three or four piece band uh that allows you to even foot switch uh, different camera angles to your stream so you may not need another tech person in the background you can do it just with foot switch control uh mm -hmm. switching cameras which is also you know highlighting different players in the group or whatever to yep. stream uh that works very effectively as well so now, do your 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 boxes? Do they actually delay the audio? So if your sync is out, you can actually line them up or not? Correct. Yeah, they so do. there is audio delay on most of them now, mm -hmm. uh, okay. to allow that sync. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, this is, well, this is wonderful. Um, oh, there's one more question, but we are also getting close to the closing time. But one more question was, how much would a foot switch cost? Um, I guess, sir. I think they're between uh for 40 to 60 dollars every every a lot of manufacturers have them they're all pretty well the same you know they're usually a quarter inch type jack typically you know the boss foot switch is like 40 dollars fs5u i think just before we sign off um from each of you if you could give me three quick points to make the best stream ever with what it is around the house or with what most people have Okay, I'll let you go first, Jason. Um, best stream ever. Uh, you, lamps. Lamps work really well. Um, um, just make sure that you, when you're, like, if you're going to go to Home Depot and buy a bulb for it, that it's um, not a LED, like, blue bulb, but um, more of a soft white incandescent color. So you can, I use lamps all around my studio because a lot of times I don't like to turn on my um, big lights, when i'm working in the studio so yeah just like a whole bunch of lamps will help your um with help will help your lighting um like i said epocam is an app that you can get on your phone um to stream to your computer obs is free so you can a program like obs you don't have to pay for it so it's not like wirecast so you can download obs for free and produce your stream a little bit um and then, yeah, I think I th it, it's hard with audio because <laughs> cause if you don't have microphones laying around the house, it's like, what do you do, right? But, um, yeah, definitely, I think um, that's one thing I learned is how do you you can use lamps and stuff to, to, to get the lighting part sort of, um, you know, beefed up a little bit. And then definitely OBS um, you can use on your laptop. And Epocam is, uh, is I think, $10 for the app in the App Store. Um, that will allow you to stream your phone camera to OBS. Um, and, you know, like I said, well, Go Live Cast is, is like 350 bucks around there, apparently. Um, and that will help you with, uh, you know, some preamps and, and, uh, and mixing with uh, smartphones and so on. You know, very simple start. Um, yeah, all the, all the, it, again, the key thing is bandwidth. If you are streaming from home, make sure you got very strong bandwidth or make sure everyone's off their computers streaming whatever movies they're doing for the night because uh, <laughs> that, that'll all affect it and the other thing too is make sure you're plugged directly into the router. right yeah because a lot of people are you know complaining about their their bandwidth with wireless well it's better make sure you got a, a cable going straight to your router um and right, right into your computer because that just helps the whole thing now again if you're doing it with your iphone a little bit different 
or, or smartphone. But yeah, if you're doing with your computer, make sure you get a direct connection to your router. Agreed. Oh, wonderful. Gentlemen, thank you so much for those of you who are, who are just tuning in. We have been talking with uh, both Jason Reynolds, uh, who's a pro audio engineer and production manager, and with John DeVries, who's a representative from PAG Canada, about live streaming and what makes a, a, a good live stream. We've had a lot of rich information, lots of equipment and a lot of software advice. Um, we definitely want you to um, uh, <laughs> and take all this in. I'm going to get a list from these gentlemen so we can post this on our website, uh, gospelmusicindustryhub.com. Gentlemen, I would like to thank you so much for to taking this time right now to share your knowledge and your information. I think a lot of people got a lot out of this, and I know that they're going to be wanting to review this over and over again. And um, I'll just ask if there's any other questions that have not, uh, we weren't able to cover because of time. Um, is it okay if we contact you with those questions and so that we can get those answers and help some of these artists and, and organizations that are wanting to stream? Would you be willing to, to take those questions? For sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Pe people can also send me an email too. Like, I mean, I give advice for free. So, um, yeah, Jason Reynolds Pro, <laughs> Jason Reynolds Pro Audio dot com. Yeah, they can hit me up on my website, send me an email, um, find me on social media. I'm, hit me up like I, I'd love to help I'm always always happy to to give some advice and share the little that I know yeah more 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 than happy to awesome. as well okay. awesome we will definitely make sure that we'll put your contact information I'll get that from you offline um to make sure I have that contact information available when we repost the the uh the video so once again, thank you so much for tuning in, for, for being with us. And audience, I thank you so much for tuning Jeez. in with us. This has been GMI Hub Studio Talk. Next week, we will be back uh, on Monday talking again about songwriting, uh, but this time for churches and large congregations. So we hope you will tune in next week. As for now, we thank you. We say God bless, and yes. we'll see you next we'll week. See you next week.